Welcome to EdU2. The Aztec lived in the Mesoamerican area, mostly modern Mexico, starting around 1325 CE. You may have heard about the Olmec and Maya. The Aztec civilization started after their declines and spread their influence widely throughout the Mesoamerican region with a strong warrior culture. As their armies moved through different regions, the Aztecs were also influenced by groups they sought to conquer. In the Aztec legend, in 1323, the Mexica, the ruling people of the Aztec, warriors and nomads, saw a vision of an eagle on top of a prickly pear cactus eating a snake. When the Mexica were traveling around Mesoamerica, they searched for this mythical eagle to find where they should build their city. When they found it, the Mexica built the city of Tenochtitlan on an island surrounded by Lake Texcoco. This image of the eagle, snake, and cactus appear on the flag of Mexico today. Tenochtitlan became the most powerful city in Mesoamerica and one of the largest cities in the world. Twin pyramids towered over the city and, according to legend, were built in the exact spot where the eagle eating the snake was found. A grand palace, busy markets, a botanical garden, zoos, and even an aquarium were all built upon the plot of land surrounded by Lake Texcoco. Since it was decided to build the city in a lake, the city had many amazing engineering technologies that made it so impressive. Bridges to the city were built, but since boats were also important for transport, the bridges had parts that could be moved, which also helped to defend the city. The city had canals, so that it could also be traveled by boat along with movable bridges to cross the canals on foot, and they had plots of land within the lake to farm crops on. Since the lake had both seawater and fresh water, a levee was constructed that blocked salt water but allowed spring water into the lake so crops could grow. Aqueducts also helps bring fresh water into the city. Today, Mexico City stands where Tenochtitlan once was. A city this complex, with a great deal of technology and engineering required very specialized jobs, and Tenochtitlan had a strict and complicated social hierarchy. The upper class, or nobles, were government, military, and religious leaders, and just below them were landowners, judges, and military officers. Nobles were entitled to receive goods, services, or labor from common people. Nobles and rulers would inherit their class from parents, and only they were allowed to wear jewelry and decorated capes. Commoners were farmers, craftspeople, merchants, and low-level priests, mostly living in Capule, which were neighborhoods ruled by a nobleman and a council. Artisans and traveling merchants were wealthy and highest within this class, and also had their own trade guilds. Guilds are groups of craftspeople that make the same types of things, so stone carvers, potters, weavers, and so on, would all have their own guild. Trade guilds could do many things. They sometimes teach a trade. Members can agree on prices for their work. They can help members get supplies for their work. And they also do quality control on the craftsmanship of the goods from their members. The Aztecs also had serfs and slaves. Serfs worked land that was owned by nobles and did not live in the Capule. 
people became slaves as a form of punishment for certain crimes or for failure to pay nobles. Aztecs were not born slaves, even if their parents were slaves. Captured soldiers from enemy armies who were not used as human sacrifices became slaves. To pay off a debt, people could decide to sell themselves or their children into slavery. Slaves had the right to marry, to have children, and to buy their freedom. Slave owners were responsible for taking care of their slaves and were usually freed when their owners died. Women had some leadership jobs within the Aztec Empire. There is evidence that they managed some guilds and markets and also worked as midwives and priestesses, but the top administrative positions were only for men and women were not allowed to be warriors. All Aztec children went to school. What they learned depended upon their gender and social class. Commoner young men learned to be warriors, and the boys began their training at the age of 15. Noble children and gifted commoner children attended schools starting around age 6, where they learned to become priests and government officials while also getting some military training. Schools had harsh punishments for bad behavior, and noble children were held to a higher standard than commoner children. Some punishments even involved hot chili peppers. The Aztecs shared many things in common with other groups in Mesoamerica, as they share common ancestors, climate, and interacted with each other. The Aztec developed a solar calendar based on the Mayan calendar, and much of the food, architecture, and government systems of city-states and justice were similar, as well as a love of ball game and chocolate. Our Olmec and Mayo video talks about these parts of Mesoamerican culture. The Aztecs even created hot chocolate, which isn't quite like what you'd expect if you ordered one today. The Aztec drink was roasted cocoa beans, corn, vanilla, chili, and water. Since cocoa beans were also used as money, this drink was considered way more valuable than even the priciest unicorn frappuccino. After the Maya culture declined, the Aztec had become the most influential group in Mesoamerica because they were great warriors. The Aztec especially admired the Toltec people, and said that they were related to them. Toltecness meant art, culture, civilization, and sophistication. This was seen as the opposite of those that had not yet settled into cities. While the Aztec did live in the same region as the Toltec, historians don't agree if the Aztecs came from the Toltec people. The Toltec people were greatly admired throughout Mesoamerica for their art and culture, and the Aztec wrote about the Toltec history saying many great things about them. While the Toltec, Olmec, Maya, and Aztec are groups in Mesoamerica that are studied the most often, there are many other groups that lived in that area as well that aren't discussed as often. We tend to study groups that have the most items left to study and those that we have the most information about. The Aztecs also revered their gods greatly, building pyramids and creating theater where people impersonated the gods. They would dress like the gods and then act out stories about them. Aztecs sometimes adopted gods from other regions and thought that the gods controlled all natural events, even sunrise and sunset. Believing that the sun needed human sacrifice in order to rise every day. They believed that the gods had human-like feelings and behavior, so they didn't always succeed at everything they tried. Even when the gods created the sun and earth, they failed four times before creating the fifth sun, 
The god Texiteca offered himself. He was strong and handsome, but a bit full of himself. Many of the other gods wanted the humble Nanwasin, who was a nice guy, pretty quiet, but covered in sores. A great fire was built, and the gods allowed Texiteca, who volunteered, to jump into the fire to become the sun. He was too afraid to jump in and stood next to the flame, frozen. Nanwasin was then asked to jump in, and he did without hesitation. With hurt pride and jealousy, Texiteca jumped in right after that. Two suns rose, and it was far too hot and bright. The gods threw a rabbit into the face of Texiteca to dim the light, and so he became the moon, doomed to forever follow the sun, but never to shine as brightly. And so, Nanmasin became the Aztec sun god. He was then given the name Tonatil, and it's Tonatil's face believed to be on the Aztec calendar stone, since it is a solar calendar after all. While King Montezuma II ruled in the early 1500s, the Aztecs saw several bad omens. In their religion, these omens, or events, meant that something bad was going to happen. Some of the bad omens that the Spanish described were the temple of a serpent god burned down, a lightning bolt struck another temple, and a strange animal was caught by some fishermen. In 1519, the Spanish conquerors arrived in Mesoamerica, near where the Aztecs lived. King Montezuma was imprisoned and the Aztec civilization fell soon after. We will discuss the Spanish in Mesoamerica in its own video, as their arrival affected nearly every group in Mesoamerica, Central and South America. So the Aztecs were great engineers, had a complex social structure, and were also famously known to be fierce warriors. Much of their culture was shared throughout Mesoamerica, and they were influenced by cultures they saw as well as ones of the past, and their ideas about the Toltec helped their history live on. Their influence and strength was also felt throughout much of the region, and their foods are now enjoyed throughout the world. So, next time you have a hot cocoa, consider adding some chili. Bye for now. Thanks for joining us.